Hello, and welcome back to lesson nine of my LabVIEW introduction course. Uh, for this lesson, we're going to be going over sub-VIs, what they're used for, and then how to make them. So sub-VIs are kind of like subroutines or functions in other programs. They're user-made, and they can be called upon in the program as many times as you want. So if there's some kind of function in a program that you're using that isn't in LabVIEW's library, you can actually make your own diagram and make your own block for it so you don't have to remake it and it doesn't have to take up the space and time every time you want to reiterate this sub VI. So today we're going to be going over just a demonstration of how to make these sub VIs and then uh, kind of how to customize them as well as just a simple example of that. So we're just going to dive into it right now. The first thing I want to do is I have an idea I want to fill a graph with circles but I don't want to create a circle or a program to write a circle every single time I want to add a new circle so I'm gonna create a sub VI for that circle and so what I'm gonna to do to start is by creating that sub VI so to make a circle we're gonna start with a for loop over here let's start with a for loop and we want to set that to, let's say, something higher, like 150, because we want it to iterate enough times. And so next thing we're going to do is we're going to take 2pi, if I can find it. I'm going to multiply. Okay. Oh, actually, that one's going to be one of the ones in our numerics. Where is my 2 pi at? Well, we're going to just cheat because I don't feel like finding it at the moment. And we're, for the sake of keeping things moving, we're just going to call it 6.28. That's supposed to be 2 multiplied by pi, but we'll just use 6.28 for now. We're going to multiply that by our input. And then... After that, we're going to divide it by the number of iterations. So divide it by the times this program iterates. That looks a little messy. So we're going to pull that down. And then we're going to sweep up our wires. Hmm. Well, did a real good job cleaning that up. And then after that, there's a function. Our, we're going to go into our mathematics, our elementary, our trigonomics. And then there should be a sine and cosine. This will give us an output of a sine wave and a cosine wave. Since we want to make a circle, we're going to take and multiply that by the size of the circle we want. So we're going to need another numeric. We're going to multiply. Multiply. Here we go. And then we're going to copy that because we want to multiply the sine and the cosine of that. So the sine up into there, cosine into there. And then our circle size will be multiplied by each of those. And we'll just leave that hanging out on the outside for now. All right, we're going to extend this. As you can see, this single program is getting a little bit longer. I could shorten it up but for the sake of time we're just gonna keep it nice and slow next thing we're gonna do is sometimes if we're doing this on a graph we might want to offset this circle so we're going to add an offset into the circle by axes so what this is going to do is we're gonna take one just plunge it into there the other one put it into our addition and then pull our offsets out over here One's going to go into here, one's going to go into there, and now all we have left to do is make the output for these. Now the outputs of these are going to be interesting because we're going to actually output this into a graph. And I know in our course we haven't looked at graphs yet, and we'll get there, but for the sake of learning sub VIs, we'll just use a graph as a visual representation. It'll make it easier to look at what you're, the ball being made here instead of some kind of array output. And then 
since we have two inputs going into that graph, we're going to use another term you might not have seen before, or another block that's a bundle. And we're going to bundle the arrays coming out of this system so that it's something readable by the graph we made. So now if we make a circle size of 1 and keep the offset at 0 and we run this, you'll see that it prints out a circle for us on the graph. Now we could set the graph size to, I don't know, the range to where it doesn't auto range so we could see the ball offset throughout. But I think you guys have a pretty good idea of what we're looking at now. So what we want to do now is if I wanted more graphs or like let's say more circles on this graph or something like that, I don't want to put this whole this whole function block and put it multiple times in. It'll just look bad and it'll take up a lot of space. So what we can do is make something called a sub VI. So a sub VI I'm going to take I'm going to grab everything that's inside that function block. I'm going to go into edit and I'm going to go create sub VI. So what this does now is you see that I retain all of my inputs that I have here, but you'll notice that now we have a singular block that represents all of that. And if I run it again, you'll see we still have a circle because if we double click on this, it brings us to our sub VI panel. Now we're going to try to click that into place. We're going to pull up and you can see inside that sub VI that we have our circle size input, our axis offset, our axis offset, and our array that are being outputted here and going into our bundle for the graph. So the sub VI, it's going to be saved and it's going to be something we can pull up. So if I go hit, if I go hit uh, back to our regular page and I delete this, and then move back into our sub VI. Now it's something we can kind of, we can file, save as. We're gonna save as a new sub VI. We're gonna call it ball and then sub VI. Hit okay. And then we're gonna go back to our original. pull up the chart for it. And so now we can go into select VI and we'll see our ball sub VI is there. And when we input that, that brings it back to here. So now we can break all these lines and you'll see we have axis offset two, axis offset, and then our two array outputs for our bundle. And that is how our sub VI works. Now some fun things you can do with the sub VI, once again our circle, if I double click on it again, we can do things such as customize the icon. We can customize the icon up here by going into edit icon by right clicking on it. And that'll bring us into this kind of edit page. So this is just the basic icon when you make a sub VI in lab view. But let's say I want to change it to something that is more understandable for that as a program to make of all. So you can go in, you got a pretty simple palette over here for decorating, but I want to make this a ball. Let's say a light blue ball. So I can draw out this ball and ooh, we can do something fancy. Maybe put a little color in it. Oops. Put a little shading on it. And then we can also do stuff such as adding text. So we can say ball. And then actually we're going to put that a little lower. Oop, oop, oop. I forget this one first. And hit. So now we have ball, and if we go in and we hit OK, 
you'll see that our icon now has changed to represent that wall icon. The other thing we can do is we can change the connection ports on here. So if you notice, if I click these ports up here, this port represents our circle size, this port represents our axis offset, and this port represents our axis offset input, and then we have our array 2 output and our array output. So if I right click on this, we can go into patterns and we can actually change how we want those terminals. So let's say I want something simpler like that. So now we only have six terminals and it fills out better with one empty terminal. And whenever you do that, we're going to save this again. And you'll notice that the sub VI is, is uh, grayed out over there. That's because it no longer recognizes that those ports are operating. So we're going to save. We're going to save and then we're going to come back over here. We're going to delete our icon and then go back into select VI. We're going to open up our ball sub VI and pull that back in. And you'll notice it has three ports on the side, two ports over here. And those are the inputs and outputs we needed. Now, I'm going to have no challenge lesson at the end of this one because I think it's pretty straightforward. But I hope you found this lesson helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comment section or message me personally. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.